going on, guys? Welcome to a special edition of Wrestling That Made Us. I'm your host. I'm the notorious one. I am Dom. I'm here with my boy, the Dominican Dream, Poppy Platino. But today we have a guest of a Hall of Famer. Last week I discussed WrestleMania 7 with Hulk Hogan and Sergeant Slaughter. Today I got Sergeant Slaughter's daughter on the podcast. I have Kelly Slaughter right here. Kelly, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that uh, you've seen Wrestling I Made Us that came out last week and you uh, had some comments to it. So, <laughs> and you know I how to did, follow I up. Did. <laughs> <laughs> All I right, did. so I I'm gonna get right into your, it. Uh, I saw your post and I was like, oh, hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that Uh-oh. guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, so I'm gonna get right into it. So, what was it like growing up? as you're uh, the daughter of a G.I. Joe and a wrestling legend? I get asked this question all the time, and I feel like I have the worst answer because I'm pretty (laughs) honest with everything. And it's like, he was my dad. And, like, the whole G.I. Joe and wrestling thing, like, I did not care. (laughs) Did not care at all that that's what he did. That's just what he did for a living. (laughs) But it wasn't, I don't know any different because my dad, since I was born was wrestling, you know what I mean? So I don't know what it's like to have a dad that's not a professional wrestler. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like it happened like when I was 10. So I have like a before and after. It's always been like that. Okay. It was, there was definitely perks to it. And, you know, like growing, when I was really little, I thought that, Everybody had somebody in their family that was famous. (laughs) Yeah, I heard that. Um, I just thought that's how it was. Like, if it wasn't your dad, maybe it was your mom. If it wasn't your mom, maybe it was your uncle. If it wasn't your uncle, maybe your grandpa. Like, I don't know. You know? Yeah, I forgot who I heard. I'm sorry, but I forgot who I heard. Somebody said that. Yeah, um, I thought everybody's dad had an action figure. I heard somebody say that before in one podcast or whatnot. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's true. You're like, I thought everybody's dad did. I brought my dad's G.I. Joe into um, show and tell in the first grade. And I held it up and I was like, this is my dad. (laughs) They were like, your dad's a plastic toy. This is my dad. They didn't get it. And they also did not care. (laughs) That's awesome, though. (laughs) Yeah. That is. All right, but... Your dad had a very busy schedule back in the day. Like, how was it for him to balance between home life and work? I think my mom pretty much kept him kind of grounded and forced him to leave Sarge in the locker room. Like, Sarge didn't come home. So he did have, like, a disconnect there where he could disconnect from work um, when he was home. But there really wasn't like a balance because my dad was gone like 300 days out of the year, (laughs) you know, he was gone all the time. So there was no balance, but he did try to make up for things. Like if he wasn't going to be able to be there for a birthday or birthday party that we might be having or um, a father daughter dance or something like that, he always tried to make it up to us and, he would always try to call us like the day of and just like let us know that if he could be there, he would and that he loved us and would explain to us like why he had to be gone. And we would always just be like, we know, daddy, we know we love you. You know, wow. it was hard to not have your dad around, you know, and my mom pretty much was a single mom. I mean, he provided for us like monetarily and materialistic things um, because he wasn't there physically, but um, it was still hard not to have your dad there. And, you know, my mom was by herself and she had to figure out what was going to happen, who was going to take us to the father daughter dance, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. like who's, we didn't live near family. So it wasn't like grandpa could take us, yeah. you know, or uncle mm-hmm. could take us. So she was the one stuck holding the bag, trying to figure it all out. Oof. 
I got to follow up to that though, since you are like um, a daughter of one of the rest the wrestling legend. Like, do I know sometimes you hear about certain wrestlers living around in like a certain community? Did you have that? Like, where you grew up with some of the other um, children of wrestling? I really didn't. We, I, my dad was really close with a handful of wrestlers, and um, that's who we would he like allowed us to be around yeah. and we weren't always, they were sometimes on the road and so their kids weren't with them. So I really didn't see a lot of the other kids. Um, but my dad um, was close with um, Lord Alfred Hayes. And okay. so his kids, you know, we would hang out cause they were kind of, you know, it was easier when my dad was in the territories when wrestling was a territory because everybody would live in the same place okay. around the same area. You know what I mean? They were in that territory most of the time. So it would be easier. But um, <laughs> yeah, I really didn't hang out with a lot of them. We would see them every now and then. But I think one of my dad's best friends was Roddy Piper. And I think I only met two of his kids once. Wow. And one of them was like a baby. <laughs> and I was just a little girl too. I was only like four or five. Okay. So wow. it wasn't, wrestling was not a big, and GI Joe really wasn't a big part of our lives. It was just like what my dad did. And it really wasn't until I was older, like when he was the commissioner, <clears throat> That my sister and I like had people over and we were watching whatever it was on wrestling that my dad was on because he told us, hey, this is going to happen. And so we had some friends over, like the commercial came on and my sister and I were like, looking at each other <laughs> like that, that was dad. <laughs> like that's crazy. Like dad was just like that, like it hit us when we were older, like that was dad doing that right now. And like, you know, so. It hit us when so, we were older. So question, are you a, a fan of wrestling? Do you still follow the product? I was when I was younger. And it's kind of funny because I would watch wrestling when it would come on TV. And then my dad would walk in and be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm watching wrestling. I want to, I'm waiting for you to come on. And he'd be like, well, I'm not on that show. So turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> And I'd be like, so, oh, well, um, I don't know. I just wasted like an hour watching this, waiting for you to come on. <laughs> <laughs> so when you seen him as the commissioner, like what were your thoughts on him and DX, Shawn Michaels and Triple H basically abusing him every week, <laughs> putting the, the, yeah. the shield well, over his face so and spitting and whatnot? <laughs> yeah. So in that time frame, I had a lot of my friends were really big fans and they would always, you know, be like, doing the whole DX <laughs> thing. And um, and uh, so I thought it was hilarious, like when they came out with the, the windshield wiper thing, because it was so like, that's so true. You really do need a shield <laughs> when he talks. And because his jaw sticks out so far. And yeah. when he gets really excited, then he really, it's really coming out. And um you can see in so, in the clips of that where they take him off and he says, he has said and told me and has, I think he said it publicly before, that he couldn't wait till they took those things off. Because as soon as they took him off, he just let him have it and just was spinning <laughs> all over the place. And so you can see in the clips where it's like coming at them. And they were like, oh, oh wow. Oh. It's great. Oh. <laughs> So you said that your dad was on the road over 300 days a year. Um, so for the most part, when you did see him, you seen him at home, but you seen him on TV at the time. So what was your uh, you know favorite match or a moment of his that you remember as a child? Mm, well, the most memorable one is probably the one that I talked about on the biography that was like traumatizing because that was the most memorable because it was traumatizing. And that was just basically he was wrestling the Iron Sheik and it was like a family show and 
Iron Sheik had a weapon and was like attacking my dad and I thought he was going to kill my dad because I thought it was like a knife or something. He was going to stab my dad and then my dad was like bleeding and it was very traumatic. And I was like five years old maybe. And so I'm thinking I'm watching my dad be murdered. So that would probably be the most memorable one. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I really haven't seen like a lot of my dad's matches in person because we didn't really go on the road with him a lot. And, um, and because that was like one of my first shows, I think that was maybe my first or second show. Then it was like, we weren't allowed to go anymore. <laughs> because it was so traumatic for us. Um, so it wasn't until I was older when I would actually like be at a show so I'm trying to think of like what my favorite one would be. Well, everyone's favorite and my dad's favorite is the alley match with Pat Patterson. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I've been told, and I don't know how true this is, um, but I've been told that that is a match that they use in the wrestling schools, like show, like this is a match, like this is storytelling. This is, you know, textbook, how you do a wrestling match. So... Um, I've been told that I have no idea if that's true or not, but yeah. Definitely got to check that match out. I, I did hear about it numerous yeah, times. So definitely got to go on YouTube and check it out. Him winning the title. Oh, was, yes. <laughs> that was yeah, pretty exciting. That was an yep. exciting one. <laughs> I was actually happy for that, to be honest. I was a, whole, uh, a Warrior fan for a little bit as a kid, but I don't know what it was that just... I wasn't a fan. He just fell out of favor with me, and I was like, you know what? I like the heel. And then the sleeper roll, I've always loved that move. It's so simple. You can lock it in on anybody, and it's one of the reasons why I got the shirt. Nice. <laughs> I don't know how you were not a fan at that time. We was two years old when that happened, when, his dad, when her dad won the title. so <laughs> No, I look when I look back on it, like I did like Warrior, but it's just like, the more like the way we break down stuff and the more stuff like with characters, I like I liked him more. It's just certain guys fall out of favor because you start watching them and then you kind of realize how they are and it's kind of like repetitive. Like okay, this guy's gonna do this and he's gonna do that. All right, seen it before. With guys like her dad, it just seemed like it was a different match. Not all the time, but it was something different. And I was actually excited for a change just to see something like that going back. It's like. I wasn't expecting where to lose it that early as a kid, like looking back. But like you said, we were only two years old. What do I remember? But we used to watch all these DVDs and um, VHSs. Yes, VHSs are still around when we were around. <laughs> so it, it would get stuck. And I'd go back to that match also. I'm just like, oh, my God, my hero lost. But I'm kind of glad he did. So that that's one of my favorite matches, look, looking back on it. And it was good storytelling, too. It was. Yes. Good storytelling, even though that was, and that's what I had reached out to you, Dom, and said that was a very hard time. In <laughs> I can imagine. Not a fun time at all for us, but glad you guys liked it. <laughs> so how old were you at that time when this took place, when he uh, teamed up with General Adnan and um, it was 93? Right? Or was it 91, 92? It was I was 90, in the 91, grade. Was like 91. So 91. So I was 12. Okay. So oh, already so. an awkward point of life, right? When you're <laughs> yeah. 12, it's already awkward. And um, sixth grade and having that happen, my dad told us he was doing it. I don't think I really understood like the gravity of it and the weight of it and like how like I mean, that's like some heavy stuff there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think I really understood. I was just like, oh, okay, but are you going to win? <laughs> like, that's all I cared about. Like, are you going to win? Are you going to be the, you know? And he was like, well, yeah, but I'm not, gonna, they're not going to like it. Like, I'm going to be a bad guy. I'm not going to be a good guy, you know? And I was just like, oh, yeah. okay, well, as long as you win, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, um, <clears throat> but it was it was hard yeah i forgot yeah, your question so, so at this time um after he won the title from ultimate warrior at the royal rumble and he aligned himself with general adnan and sergeant um not sorry uh the iron sheik 
and then he basically was a you know what was the word they used um iraqi sympathizer yeah yes. the sympathizer yep and then you see him with the the turban on and burning hogan's shirt he had the boots those boots were hot though, i'm not gonna lie that he had yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with everything going on with the Gulf War, just uh, I think it just finished up at this time because WrestleMania 7 was supposed no, to be just started. Oh, just started. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oof. They had right. not, there was no invasion yet. And then when they had like kind of like set the ball rolling and then there, the Kuwait was invaded and then it was like, uh oh. Oh boy. We're in it now. Like there's no going oh, yeah. back. We got to keep going. But you. Yeah. So they literally changed. The venue of WrestleMania Seven because it's supposed to be outdoors at the LA Coliseum, and then they moved it indoors to um, whatever it's called. It wasn't the Staples Center, but some arena. And yeah. yeah, I heard I heard the security they were loaded, and that you, that him, and your family were receiving a lot of death threats to the company and to the house and whatnot. I heard it was a traumatic time at at that period. It was. It was awful. It was, um, you know. Like I said, I didn't understand the gravity of it. And that's just my dad. And my dad's awesome. And he's like the best dad in the world. And like, why could anybody like hate my dad and want to kill him and kill us? And because of this like wrestling thing, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't really, it was, I didn't get it. And, um, but I got, you know, the kids in school were not nice to me. There was like this one group of boys that would always like pick on me and say stuff to me about my dad. And then when this ha- they did it anyway. And then when this happened, then they did it even more. But then it was more like, you're a traitor, just like your dad. You, you should go to jail, just like your dad. And <sighs> so to be in, you know, the sixth grade going through all these, these, awkward moments anyway and then add that on top of it and um there was security living outside of our house wow um vince vince basically called my mom and was like uh i'm sending security that we've received death threats and bomb threats not only of your husband but of you and your girls and I fa- I actually found out during the taping of the biography that wow. they knew our names and they knew our address and they knew where we went to school. And I didn't know that at the time. That's scary. And this was back, yeah. there was no internet. There was no, you couldn't Google people. You couldn't people search, you know, you there we were unlisted. There was no way, you know, they got our information somehow. <clears throat> the road that we lived on was unmarked, uh, oh, mostly geez. because it was like a sign that was t- um, hammered to a tree, like a wooden carved out sign. And my dad would like tear it down, <laughs> throw it on the ground, and then somebody would come along, probably our neighbor, and they would put it back up. Um but anyway, it was so it was scary to know to find that out later that it wasn't just oh we're gonna kill Sarge and his family. It was we're gonna kill Kelly and Nicole, and we're gonna get them when they're coming out of school at Weston Elementary School. You know what I mean? Like or Weston Middle School and Weston High School, and you know. So wow. to find that out later, like you can see my face. I was like, what? I didn't know that. <laughs> That's rough. If you see the biography, yeah, because I they caught my like total um, honest reaction because I was like, "What? I had no idea that they knew that about us. I just thought it was like, again, I'm in the sixth grade, so like, how catastrophic is this that's happening? You know, I had no clue. Let's just be thankful social media was not prevalent back then because I, I hate politics as it is. It's we don't talk about it on our on our shows, but. It's just ridiculous. One little, like, just an angle like this, even though it's just for show, it should not get to anyone's family. I, I'm just going to look at the camera right now. I was like, fans, please, just stay away from the rest of the family. It, we understand sometimes it can be realistic to us, but family's off limits it, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Thank you. And it really is. And <clears throat> to be honest with you... My dad and I 
maybe 10, 15 years ago, we're looking at some, he wanted to uh, like record off the internet and I had no idea how to do it. So we were just like looking at promos, but he wanted to get all of his promos onto a, like a disc or something for himself. And so I was trying to help him do it. And so we were watching old promos of him on YouTube. And then we started seeing the ones from when he was an Iraqi sympathizer. And so we start watching those and I'm watching them and I'm, my heart starts racing and I'm like starting to shake because I'm starting to get mad. And then finally I turned to my dad and I was like, he was sitting, I was standing. I think I like really hit him really hard on the, the shoulder. And I was like, dad, he was like, whoa. And I was like, no wonder people wanted to kill you and kill us because I want to kill you right now. <laughs> After all the smack that you've been talking about America and about like the American soldiers and like all this stuff. And meanwhile, like my cousin who was an army ranger just um, died from wounds he sustained in um, Afghanistan during um, um, Operation um, Iraqi Freedom, I think it was called, Enduring Freedom. Um, <clears throat> and so like that was still like fresh and raw. And then my dad's like going in on the soldiers and like, and like and I'm like dad like no wonder <laughs> but I'm like here I am like totally like getting angry at my dad and who I know doesn't believe any of the stuff that he's saying and like I this was how many years ago and yeah. I lived through this and you know and here I am getting riled up watching my dad you know so I'm like that just goes to show like how good he was at what he did like yes People wanted to kill him. <laughs> he did his job. Because he yeah. was so good at yeah. what he did. Like, people believed it and really felt like that was, you know, real. I want to know how Vince sold it to him. Like, for him to be, you know, <laughs> Mr. USA to, all right. Yeah. And then well, he, he could be possibly losing that G.I. Joe endorsement, too, if you think about it. I don't know if he well, still had it. Well, G.I. Joe, he was already out of contract with G.I. Joe. And okay. he was just like kind of sitting around and he got the call from Vince and he was like, I've, Vince was like, I've got this idea. Like, let's talk about this. And he sold it to my dad on the idea that they would be able to sell out the Coliseum or the whatever it was that they were originally supposed to. And it was like, I think a hundred thousand or I can't remember how many people it held. And so that's what my dad did it for was to be able to sell that place out. And so then when they had to move it, he was like, we did yeah. all, of, all of this to sell out that place. And the pay I mean, yeah. that they would have gotten selling that out. Definitely. You know what yeah. I mean? I did it all for this and now it's not even happening. But I mean, if you know, if all those death threats didn't come through and all the scares, maybe they probably would have just continued with that arena. But it, I got to give Vince the the big props for that. You got to protect your talent and and the family too. So he's he's going through a lot of shit and some of the stuff I don't agree with because I don't know if they're true or not. But I'm not going to get into that also. But for taking care of the family, especially going through that time, I got to give him his big props for that. Especially for you guys. Yeah, just looking online, I just yeah, looked up I mean, the... Yeah, did. I'm sorry. I was just going to say that I just looked online to see how much the, the Coliseum could hold. It could hold over 90,000 people, so... <laughs> yeah, that would have been the biggest paycheck out yeah. of anybody. Yeah, so that's what <laughs> my dad did it for. And then it didn't even happen didn't play for him. So it was, it was, that was a huge letdown for him too, you know? Yeah. I'm going to grab so some I don't, water. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I don't remember after the WrestleMania 7 match with him and Hogan, like, what did he do after that? Like, did he like, like get faded off TV for a little bit? He came back and he begged and said, I want my country. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, he, he was off TV for about six and... months. Yeah. 
right. If okay. I remember, he came back SummerSlam or Survivor Series. Oh, that I don't know. I don't know my dad's career that well to know the timeline like that. Okay. But I know I've seen a uh, promo of him. He had like the five o'clock shadow going in and I think Hogan beat him again. I think that might have been SummerSlam. So I don't know. It might have been like maybe six months later or something like that. Yeah, I know there was like a little furlough. Like there was a little point in time like he wasn't wrestling. Like he was, they like kept him low. He was on the DL. (laughs) And then they brought him back out and he like came, I think he came out in a Jeep or some kind of army or uh, not army. It would have been Marines, but some kind of military something. And um, I'm pretty sure. And he had his swagger stick under his arm. Maybe I can't, I'm not, I can't remember now. I think I'm, I think I'm confusing. I'm putting two different promos together. Yeah, it, <laughs> by the end of this interview, we'll probably figure it out, or we'll probably look it up and we'll we'll find it. Yeah, yes. you can find it, I'm sure, very easily. Um, yeah. yeah, but he just comes out and he's like, I want my country back. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and Kelly, what the wrestling you up to? community brought him right back in and gave him open yeah. arms and was like, come on, Sarge, come on. There are yeah. some that still call him a traitor. <laughs> But come on. <laughs> it's all part this of it, is... man. It's all part I know. of it. Well, this yeah. is why he's a legend. He made you believe. So I think that's the one thing that's missing in the industry right now. There are so many guys that are good in the ring, but they just don't make you believe who they are. It's just, I don't know if they're missing a character or somebody unique. It's, you can only have so many different guys, and I and I get it, but... He stood out, as far as I'm concerned. Starge definitely stood out, so I'll always remember him. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I think um, I don't know a lot about the business, and I don't know really what I'm talking about, but I will say I think it's because there's writers that come up with these ideas, right? And it used to be that, like, my dad came up with his character, my okay. dad grew that character. You know what I mean? And so it comes it's like comes from somewhere inside him for him to like put put this character together. And he's talked about how he came up with Sergeant Slaughter before. Um it was like a movie and two different movies. He came the name Sergeant Slaughter came from a movie with Jackie Gleason and then um there was another movie about a DI. And so that's where he got the character from. And then he got the name from a different movie. But um, he, uh, oh, (laughs) that was like a little tangent. Now I can't remember where I was going before I went off. I jumped off the train and now I need to get back on. And I can't remember what I was saying. (laughs) We'll try to get you back on. (laughs) Uh, But no, it's true. Like how you were saying that you're, he created his own character and he, unfortunately yes, writers. Yes, he created his own character. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. He created his own character. And so I think a lot of times the talent is brought characters and brought, well, brought gimmicks, I should say. They're brought gimmicks. And they're like, this is what we want you to do. And they mm-hmm. want a job. So they're going to do it, right? So um, I think they're not doing something that they necessarily want to do or like it doesn't jive with them. Yes. yes. In some cases, I'm saying. But again, I know nothing about the business and I really don't watch wrestling. <laughs> so, I really don't know what I'm talking about, but I feel like that's probably I'll part get of it. it. I, I think that what you're saying is absolutely correct because if someone's going to tell me to do X. Oh, well, actually, it's it's like a saying. I've, I've talked to a couple guys. You can teach somebody how to do a job, but if they don't want to do it, they're not going to put their, their 100% in it. It's the guy who absolutely wants to go 100% in. He's going to go balls to the wall and give you everything he's got. But if you're just handed the keys and you don't care, you're going to give 10% effort for 100% of a job that you need to have. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I... I, unfortunately, I think, like you said, some of these writers are giving these gimmicks instead of guys coming up with ideas to figure out what 
it's best for TV. I mean, I, there's only so many roles that somebody could be the bad guy this way or that guy, but you got to figure out something. And like you said, watch some movies, try to combine a character, and then boom, you have something very unique that might, somebody might not have even thought about. Yes. Right. That's for sure. I don't know if, um, like, a military character like my dad would go over as well now in today's think, climate. As I in, think it'd actually and, like, be the whole perfect. Hmm? I think in this time frame, I think it actually would work, especially if you it do? was, like, an ex-Marine. Oh, yeah. 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 We, we have a couple of Russells right now who are I don't think the whole Russell Iraqi right oh, no, 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 no. You can't, you can't do that. You can't right touch now. that. Yeah, that you can't touch on that. <laughs> that will stay away from. No, you're right. I do think you're right. A, a military one would would go over pretty good, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So question for you, Kelly. So what are you up to now? Have you ever considered you know, following in your father's footsteps? I did want to be a wrestler when I was young, um, just a little girl, because I idolized my dad. And he did not encourage it. He would say, wrestler's life, life, it's really hard. You don't want it. You don't want it. And I'm like, I know it's hard. I live it. Like, I live the other side of it. I know how hard it is on the family. Um, but he would just always say no. And um even there was even wrestlers that I would be like, dad, like hook me up with so-and-so. Like, he's really cute. Like introduce me. And he'd be like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. He's a nice guy and everything, but no, absolutely not. You, you do not want to be married to a wrestler. I'm like my dad's a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> he did not want me to wrestle. Needless to say, uh, my mom didn't want me to wrestle either. So it was not encouraged. Um, I think as I've gotten older, I think it would be kind of cool. Like I got, I started this fitness journey and I've been doing a lot of like lifting and um, I teach a class, a fitness class and I've just really gotten into fitness and I think it would be, it's almost like a travesty that I didn't become a wrestler. I'm like, I could have been, I could have been awesome or I could have totally sucked, who knows, but I'll never know now. I feel like I'm too old. Uh, I don't know. You never know. Yeah, I, we've seen yeah. guys that are probably older than us. I'm AJ Styles is like forty-seven. Yeah, Jericho's fifty plus. <laughs> well, but they've been doing it for a long time, and they don't have to work as much. You have to work yeah. a lot to uh, pay your dues, and it's true. there's a lot. Like I can't just like go in and be like I'm a superstar. You know what I mean? Yeah. I agree. No, it doesn't work that way doesn't work that way they paid their dues you know <clears throat> i don't i don't i'm too old to pay my dues in <laughs> like, <laughs> i hurt myself enough working out i can't imagine trying to wrestle how much i'd be hurting myself my old my poor old body <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it would be awesome, though. Like, I've thought about it, and I'm like, that would be so awesome. Too bad this wasn't 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I get it. But people have made comments that I should <clears throat> that I should get into wrestling, and people have made comments that I should get into, like, G.I. Joe and have an action figure and all of these things, and that's all great and fine, and would all of those things be totally awesome? For me to be able to do all of those things, absolutely. Who wouldn't want to do those things? But I'm not sure that's in the cards for me. <laughs> I would never say never, but you know. Yeah, that's what they say in the business. Never say never. Yeah, so I'm just never the say daughter never. of a famous guy. You know what I mean? Like, what have <laughs> I done? Nothing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. How would you describe your relationship with your dad? I'm actually pretty close to my dad. Um, I know I've, I've um, said that he was gone all the time, but um, he always made up for it. And um, he's always tried to be there in other ways and um, with advice and, um, you know, just trying to, teach us the best that he could and um so i'm 
I'm pretty close with my dad. I have a good relationship with him. Yeah. He's a grandpa, too. So he's a grandpa to four grandkids. I have two, and my sister has two. Um, so, yeah. He's, um... We're a close family. And family has always been, like big for my dad and I know that's kind of like well family was big but he was gone all the time yeah I know it doesn't like really go together but he what he did wrestling and being gone all the time was for his family he did that for us I kind of sympathize with them unfortunately because um I work for the city as well with Dom and my hours are long I go in around four o'clock sometimes I don't come home until five six o'clock at night Uh um so I'm working 12 14 hour shifts some nights so when I come home, I, I tell my girl, like, you know, thank God I have you because I don't know how I'm going to help raise the kid. I mean, financially, I got you no matter what. But I feel like I'm not there enough, but I always know I'm going to make up for it when I can. Yeah. So with, with what you say, I, I think there's hope because there's times I think about it. It's like I'm not doing enough as a father, but maybe down the road we'll, we'll see the fruits of our labor. Exactly. And you're doing the best that you can. And that's all you can do, right? It's the best that you can. And you make the effort when you're able to, to put that into your kids. Yes. And that's the most important thing, I feel like. Because I feel like your kids know that. And if they don't know it now, they're going to know it later. Like, man, my dad worked all the time, but he always found time to take us here. He always did this with us or, you know. Like me, my yeah. dad was gone all the time, but he still made the time. Like one time he came in town, my sister and I had to go to school, right? Cause it was during the school year mm-hmm. and he came to town and the circus was in New York city. And he was like, come on girls, you're not going to school. We're going to go see the circus. And we took the train into your <laughs> New York city and we saw the circus. And I was like, I got to skip school. I was so excited. I got to skip school and go to the circus. You know, I'm not suggesting you all, you know, like, take your kids out of school and take them to the circus. But it was things like that, that he did to try to make it more special. The time that we had with him. Yes. You know? Yes. I agree. I still might do that though. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, what's one day? <laughs> what's one day? I know. It's, it's like you said, those, those memories are, they'll last forever. It, it may seem like, Oh, why are you taking your son out or your kid out? You only have so much time with them, so enjoy while you have them because one day you're going to say, what if? Yeah. Or I miss doing that. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to wrap this up shortly. So your dad, he was a AWA champion. He was a WWF champion, a Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. He, had, yeah. uh, he was the most hated wrestler of the year in 1991. <laughs> inspirational wrestler of the year most uh hated wrestler back in 1991 he did okay. his job so that's good he did his job <laughs> most that inspirational tracks. wrestler <laughs> yep <laughs> in, in 1984. 1984 like and like i said he's a hall of famer but to you what is your dad's legacy oh what's his legacy oh <sighs> For me or for the fans? For you. For you, yes. For me, for me, his legacy is he's such a good, generous, kind, and kind-hearted person and man. So his legacy to me is that and what he teaches his grandkids and what he's taught me. His legacy is my grandkids. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Um, no. No, his, his legacy grandkids. is your, your, his grandkids, yeah. His grandkids, yes. <laughs> his grandkids, because it's not just my kids, it's my sister's kids, too. Yeah. And not my, yes. well, it, his legacy is my grandkids, too, because that is part of his legacy. But to me, just the man that he is and the father that he is that's good that's good what a way to end it man yes kelly thank you so much for being on the show we appreciate you yes. being on here thank you, thank you so very much, much for having me
Thank no you. Problem. You want to want to plug your social medias in case you know anybody want to reach out to you? Sure. You can find me on Facebook at Slaughter Daughter, on YouTube at Slaughter Daughter. Uh, my YouTube channel is actually pretty much just me and my dad talking about different things. Um, I just did a show with uh, Big Boss Man's daughter. Her name is Lacey. Ooh. So check that out. YouTube Slaughter Daughter. Um, and Instagram Slaughter Daughter Official. Um, Twitter underscore SGT daughter. <laughs> All right. Come Thank find you so me. Much. <laughs> Definitely go follow her. Definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, I'm the notorious one. I am Dom. I'm here with the Dominican Dream, Poppy Platino, and here with Kelly Slaughter, the daughter of Sergeant Slaughter. And we will see you next time. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>